Oh hey, it's Rob, and I'm back out in the garage today uh, because the new starter came for the snowblower. So I'm going to be doing a quick installation of that. Well, quick. <laughs> I've already been out here for a while getting set up, so it's. Uh, I'm trying to make it quicker, but uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. So let's get to it. So as I've already had this off once, I know how it goes. So first of all, I have to take off the gas tank or get it out of the way. Now I did shut the fuel off, so it's not going to be going everywhere. But I want to get this up and out of the way, which is, uh, well, it's not as easy as it looks. So I think we'll just go there. That seems to be doing pretty good. Now there are three bolts. There's one on the top here that holds this bracket on that I have to remove to be able to get to, sorry, there are, I think there are four, four bolts that hold this on. So I have to get this one off. And I forget the size of this one. So I'm gonna have to uh, look, I think it, well, go with 11 millimeter or uh, 7 sixteenths. Uh, so let me pop this in. And take that puppy off. And now I believe that these are going to be ten millimeter. Let's try three eighths. So apparently imperial. All right. Well, I'll go with that. I'm just so used to metric, but I guess this is a Tecumseh. So, ow! I did not want to do that. Just want to get this out of the way. Mm. How can I get in there? Oh, that's right. Those are uh, those are torques. Ah. All right. Let me see what I got. Has to get those out of the way. And I think those are a T25 on the bottom, but I will I will check. I was indeed correct. That's a T25. Let's see if I can get a little better glimpse into what I'm doing here. Yeah, try to get a little better light down here. Yeah, I'm just going to take these out. And that's the starter motor out. The other piece I have to remove is the starter switch, which is screwed onto the top. So let us unscrew it. And there is a starter assembly. 
Now, one of the things that I noticed about this was that the casing is cracked here. Uh, one of these bolts was loose. I forget which one it was. And I think that caused it some internal damage when it was torquing. And the bearings are not very good. This is, it'll squeal like a pig when you try and run it. Now, you can also see that there's some wear on these teeth. Now that makes me a little suspicious. So what I also want to do is before I install the new starter, I want to check the flywheel and see if that is indeed in, still in good shape. I hope it is, because that would be a really expensive fix. For that, I am going to use this lovely beast. This is a borescope, an inspection camera, or uh, otherwise known as an endoscope. <laughs> uh, what I'm doing is I'm sticking it in here so that I can get a good view of the teeth of the starter, or the teeth of the uh, flywheel. So what I'm going to do is start recording, pull the spark plug out, uh, and then I'm going to slowly pull, if I can get it, there we go, slowly use the pull starter. Yeah, there's a little bit of chatter. Some of the teeth are kind of wonky. Yeah, like yeah, there's a few of those in there that are pretty beat up, but I don't think there's any that are going to be Causing issues. Let me see if there's better vision. some damage on it, but I don't think there's anything that's too horrible. Yeah, it's, whoop. I don't know, there's one there. It looks like it's got the top chewed off a little bit. I don't know if I've been around the whole wheel yet, but... It looks like there's some damage, but I don't think it's anything that's going to keep it from starting. So, I'm going to stop the recording here. And we'll turn it off. So here is the new starter. And as you can see, it looks just like the old starter, uh, except a bit newer. Comes with uh, screws and stuff to attach it. I don't know if I want to reuse the old ones. Yeah, I think I'll just reuse the old ones. I might put the uh, these washers in underneath. I might put these washers in underneath the uh, starter starter switch. I 
if that's where they go. That's another thought. No, I want it to be close that way. Okay. Now, do I want to reuse these? Yes, I think I'm going to reuse. I think I'm going to reuse the uh, the old hardware, just because I know it works. Um, I'm more invested in these bolts. I think these are a little better quality than the ones that came with the kit. Not entirely sure, but let's go. <clears throat> First thing I want to do is to mount this again. So I'm going to start by just putting these in barely. This is a pain in the butt. It's a difficult angle to work at. I'll make sure I don't get these cross threaded. Stop that. So these new bolts are a T27, just perfect. Let me get this back in place. What is the problem? The problem is that these are these have shoulders on them, and uh, the other ones do not. So I'm going to try and reuse one of these. Looks like that one might be stripped. Not happy about that, but not much I can do about it. 
and I'll give these a quick tighten. Click. <clears throat> All right, that feels nice and solid. One of the fun things, this came with a an extension cord to use for the starter, and it is not a cold weather extension cord. Uh, this thing will stiffen up and freeze just uh, just fine. So before I put this all back together, oh, and it doesn't even fit. Wow, that's some quality right there. All right, I found an extension cord that fits. And I've got the spark plug pulled so it won't actually start. Let's just see how it cranks. Yeah, that's what I was worried about with the flywheel. So, alright, I'm going to take this off again and see what it looks like inside. Because if this is a section that's damaged too badly, I'm going to have to replace the flywheel for the starter to work. Ah. Okay, uh, what I did is I ended up taking this off so that I could look at the teeth again. Uh, put the borescope in and found that, yeah, there's, there's some teeth damage, but it just doesn't seem, I mean, there's not like chunks of teeth missing. So, I, you know, I was trying to figure out what it was. So, in the end, because I had this uh, bolt down here that seemed like it was stripped, the hole for it, uh, I used one of the new bolts from the kit and it, it turns out that it's slightly larger so I was able to go in and pretty much re-tap, re-thread the holes and this is now mounted nice and sturdy and I decided to give it a try and check this out it starts like a champ so, two things I think. One is that these pins, or these bolts, aren't really hold down pins, they're centering pins to keep it in place. So I wanted to get these in place first to make sure that it was in the right section, then get these into the engine block. And now it seems to be working fine. I'm okay with that. I call it a win reattach the tank and then mount the uh, starter up on the top. Click.
want those. Come on, I just go straight. I'll just go straight. <clears throat> Nice and solid, and that's pretty much it for the uh, for the starter replacement. All in all, I thought that was I was I was worried for a second, but it seems to have worked out okay. So I'm pretty happy now that I don't have to try and pull start this thing all the time. So uh, all in all, it seems like that turned out okay. It was a little dicey there for a bit, but uh, managed to pull it off and get something working that wasn't working before. So, <clears throat> I'm going to count this one as a win. Uh, there's still the carburetor replacement to come, so I'll be doing a video on that too. As well, when the carburetor gets here, it's not going to be here for a while yet. Uh, in the meantime, I will see you guys next week.